Abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Yes. For without me he can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and he is with withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my work abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will. Yes. We want to know why we don't get prayers answered. Where we abide in. Oh my God. If ye abide in me, and my work abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will. And it shall be done unto you. Yes. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. Yes. That's three times we've heard that, much fruit. Yes. So shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so I have loved you. Continue ye in my love. Right. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Right. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Amen. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you Amen. and that your joy might be fulfilled. Amen. I'm going to read on. Amen. It says, this is my commandment that ye love on. one another. Yes. Everybody say love one another. Love one another. Love one another as I have loved you. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on. Love one another as I love you. You know why Jesus died on the cross? Because he loves you. Amen. And you're supposed to love your brother like he loved you. Oh, I'm right. Greater love hath no man than this, that he may lay down his life for his friend. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. You have not chosen me. Come on. You have not chosen me. Somebody said, when I found the Lord, no. You didn't find the Lord. The Lord found you. Yes. And you submitted to Him. Yes. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, Amen. that your fruit shall remain. Yes. That whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, yes. you, shall, you may have, He may give it to you. Yes. These things I command that you love one another. I'm going to go over to Galatians real quick with a very familiar scripture in Galatians chapter six, uh, chapter 5, verse 23. It says, but the fruit. Everybody say the fruit. The fruit. It does not say fruits. No. It says fruit. One fruit. One fruit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, mm -hmm. meekness, temperance, Against such there is no law. Uh, I want to preach to you for a little while on this thought. I choose to bear fruit. Amen. I choose to bear fruit. I ain't got all the time I need to preach this, but I'm going to do my best. How many of you all like fruit in here? Just about everybody likes fruit. Some kind of fruit. Watermelon. Cantaloupe. Pineapples. Pears. Peaches. Plums, strawberries, grapes. Yeah. We can go on and on and on with fruit. There's so many. Kiwi. Yeah. All those fruits. We all love those fruits. Mm -hmm. But how many know fruit is very expensive? Oh, yeah. Honestly. Yeah. You can buy some fruit for what you can pay for a steak. Yeah. Yeah. And I would choose the steak over fruit any day. Yeah. By saying. Now, something's shaking their head. No. This fruit is no, all I can get. <laughs> You'd rather have the fruit. Amen. But I'm a meat eater. People say, what do you want for supper? I say, anything that contains meat, that's what I want because I'm a meat eater. Amen. But we all love fruit, but fruit is expensive.
expensive and we cannot sometimes go in and buy the fruit that we would like to have. Sometimes we have to choose whether we want strawberries or grapes or whatever because of the price of the fruit. Now I'm going to throw something before you tonight. Wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be something if we could go to Walmart? That's where we all shop most of the time or Kroger's. Wouldn't it be something if we could go in there in the fruit department and buy one piece of fruit that tasted like all pieces of fruit? Wouldn't it be now? <laughs> now think about what I'm saying. Yes. Wouldn't it be awesome if you could go in there and buy just say some big piece of fruit for so much money and you'd have the taste of strawberries in it, you'd have the taste of grapes in it, yes. you'd have the taste of watermelon in it, and you would be able to get all those fruits in one piece of fruit. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Amen. Yes. Put it in the refrigerator, let it get good and cold, and sit down and eat that fruit. Amen. It's satisfying. Amen. But I want you to know tonight it's impossible to do that. It's impossible, amen, in this life to have one piece of fruit that would play for all other fruits. But the Bible tells us that there is a fruit of the Spirit in which what we yes. need and we must have. You don't possess the fruit of the Spirit overnight. Possessing the fruit of the Spirit is something that takes a time period for you to grow into and to learn about. Yes. Amen. You don't just get come to the altar in your life of the Lord and wake up in the morning and full of the fruit of the Spirit. You got love and you got joy and you got peace and you got long stuff and you got all these things that don't work like that. I wish you did. Amen. But it doesn't work like that. When you come to God, you have to come to Him expecting to live with Him and to grow with Him and let God put in you what He wants you to have. I know folks that want stuff from God and God don't want to give it to them, but they keep asking and they keep asking until eventually God will give it to them. And when they get it, they don't want it no more. Yeah. Come on. Can't handle it. Amen. But in the Bible, it tells us that there is a fruit of the Spirit. And Jesus, I read it to you, He said that He would, that our fruit remain and that we bear much fruit. Yes, not just a little bit of fruit, but not just a piece of love here and a piece of love there, but he said that we would, amen, continuously, day after day, moment after moment, amen, produce the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Come on. The, 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 the realm of the Spirit is different than the realm of the flesh. In the rim of the flesh, we cannot possess one piece of fruit that will satisfy all tastes. But in the Word of God, we can possess one fruit that will have the seed of all other fruit. Yes, amen. I'm going to tell you something. There's no way in this world you ever go get an apple, cut it in half, and get the core out of it and find an orange seed in it. No, sir. If you plant an apple tree, it will not bring forth oranges.
cannot have joy without having love. Mm -mm. And don't tell me you can love one person and hate another. It don't work that way. Don't tell me you can love one person and dislike them. Now you may not like the attitude of some people. Amen. But when it all pulls down to it, you must love everyone. You must love everyone. Help us, Jesus. Jesus did not die because he just loved a handful of people. No, sir. But the Bible says God so loved the world. The yes. whole world. Yes. And he seen his only begotten son, which was love, which was joy, which was peace, yes. which was long suffering, yes. which was temperance. Very long Amen. You cannot contain the fruit without love in your heart. Amen. Jesus had compassion on everybody. I can prove it to you. That's right. That's right. You see two people get married and we experience this a lot in the day that we live here. They get married and they're married for six months and then they're separated. Yeah. Why is that, preacher? I don't marry people. No way. I've had a lot of people come to me saying, I'm going to get married and once you do it, I say, sorry. Call somebody else. I don't do it. Because people do not love each other anymore. Mm -hmm. They marry for lust. They marry for wealth. They marry for what they can get out of the, the system and what they can possess. They don't love each other. Because when you love each other, you can have an argument. Amen. And then go to bed and say, I love you. I might not agree with you, but I love you. Yes, amen. Love, love amen, will conquer all things. There's no other thing that you will ever possess greater than the power of love. Love is a powerful thing. Amen. That will move mountains, cross oceans, amen, settle wars. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Yes, it is. And without love, you cannot possess these other fruit. You cannot do it. You cannot tell me that you have goodness and faith if you do not have love. Yeah, don't work that way. Now, I know we don't all get along. Right. We, have to, we may have times that we have, amen, controversy between each yes. other or disagreement with each other. Yes. But does that mean that we stop loving each other? Mm -hmm. Then why do you do it? What's wrong with Why do you do it? Just because somebody don't agree with you, you don't want anything else to do with them. And we're all guilty for it. If you're guilty of the least, you're guilty of the whole. We must learn that love is not a light switch that you turn on and off. But love endures. Yes, it does. Love endures. Yes, sir. Love will keep you married for 50 years. Love will keep you in a church for a thousand years. I've had people say, I don't know why you say that. Why don't you leave? Because I love the church. Yes, sir. I love it. Yes, you gotta it's not it. just a building, it's a part of God's body. And I love it. I love it. I love it. Yes, I do. Amen. Everything I possess, I would give up for the church. Oh, my Lord. the church was purchased with love. Yes, sir. True love. Not a fake love or a puppy love or a little kindergarten love where little Johnny says, I love Becky and I'm going to marry her. And he has 500 girlfriends from the time he's in kindergarten till he gets out of college. Right. I'm talking about a true, amen, adulterated love. Yes. Amen. My mom used to have a saying that she would say that would make me so mad. I'd say, Mommy, I love you. And I used this term a lot when I got in trouble or did something wrong. 
I'd say, I love you, Mom. She'd say, don't tell me you love me. Show me you love me. You cannot love just in word. But you must love in me. I don't just love Pam with my mouth. But I love her with my heart. And I can put up with her. He wants me to get I that can love her with my heart. I know it too. That's why. Oh Lord. <laughs> yeah, he's in trouble. <laughs> That's why. He's in trouble. When I get up in the morning. And her hair is all messed up. And her makeup is all messed up. <laughs> and her breath. Mine or yours? Her breath don't yes. smell the best. Yes. I'm sure about it, don't either, neither did y'all. Hallelujah. Aww. Now he's preaching. I can still say, Good morning. I love you. Yes. Don't rush your knees. <laughs> I love you. Oh, you see, Lord. love puts up with ugly things. Love puts up with smelling things. Love puts up with things that any normal person would throw things down and walk off from. But love gets rooted deep in your heart. And you say, hey man, I die. Hey man, I would die for your love. I would die for my wife's love. I mean it. I'm not just saying that trying to pick up from where I missed it. I would lay my life down for we'll her. I really that. believe that. I believe if I had to jump in front of a bullet, I would. But I wouldn't for you. <laughs> we should, shouldn't we? We should be able to, shouldn't we? That's the truth. Mm -hmm. You would die for Dan before you would die for me. Why? Because of the love relationship that you have made. Yes. But Jesus died and we didn't have a relationship. No. He did it anyway. Jesus died on the cross and he said, I do it because I love this world. I love it and I'll die for it. And I'll pay the sin debt that they can be saved. But he didn't even know me like that. We owe him everything. But his love was so strong that day, yes. in that moment, that it would last throughout the eons of time. Amen. Jesus has not stopped loving from the day that he said, Nevertheless, not my will be done, right. but thy will be done. Amen. Amen. You know what he was saying there? He was saying, My flesh don't want to die, but my spirit says, I'll, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Amen. And that's what we must become. We must say to our flesh, Amen. Flesh, you have no power over the spirit that God has given me. Amen. You tell folks that are led by the flesh. Mm -hmm. You can tell folks. I know folks that have talked about me like a dog. And I walk through the church and they wrap their arms around my neck and say, I love you. Talk love worketh no ill to a statement. True. Yes. Yes. Huh? How many times have we done that? Love does not puff up. Love does not so name. Come on. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Love don't throw up his hands and say, I give up on them. Let them go. Jesus said, 
Cut it down. It's no good for nothing. I read you the word. It said any branch that brings not forth fruit is to be cut off and cast into the fire. Amen. Yeah. Come on, brother. So a tree, an apple tree, ain't no good for nothing if it don't produce apples. Amen. That's what it was made for. Do you know where an apple tree gets its apples from? The root. <laughs> the root. People say that tree ain't no good. It won't produce apples. The, the tree's good. It's the root that's bad. Yeah. That's why this man said, don't cut it down yet. Let me dig around it. Let me dump around it. Let me water it. Take care of it. And then you come back. And if it don't produce fruit, we'll cut it down. Yeah. He was walking along the side of the road one day and saw a fig tree of far off. And he was hungry. And he walks up there and he puts his hand up in a tree as to pick up fig and he finds nothing. And he walks on and he curses the tree. And he said, no more shall fruit grow on this tree. They went into the city and came back out. And the tree was dead. Are we burned forth fruit? You think about what I'm saying to you. I know it's like the kind of preaching y'all like. This is what you get. I want you to know that the same sap that's in the root is the same sap that's in the tree. Amen. The same sap that's in the root is the same sap that's in the vine. That's right. The same, in the and the same sap that's in the vine is in the branches. Amen. And the same sap that's in the branches is in the fruit. Amen. Don't you know that Jesus said, I am the vine and ye are the branches. Amen. You are the branches. The vine don't produce fruit. The branch. The branch produces fruit. It puts the fruit out there. And if you are not bearing forth fruit, the word said that he would cut you off and cast you into the fire. Amen. It's impossible to be a child of God and not love your brother. God. Come on. I'm preaching to you. It's every one of us. I love you, but I just can't stand the way you praise. Well, at least I'm praising you. At least I'm trying. Yeah. At least I'm trying. The Bible talked about a man who planted a garden. Amen. And he said, while men slept, amen, somebody stuck, stuck in and planted tires among the wheat. Oh, yes. Huh? You can be so fruitful and still have tires growing up all around you. But what you got to do with, uh, let me tell you about something. I might have told this before, I'm going to tell it again. I planted some corn one time. Had never planted nothing in my life. I built my daddy plant some corn and he gave me what was left and I took it home. He said, put that in the ground and you'll have some corn. So I took it home and I cleared me out of the spot and I planted that corn in the ground.
I said, Dad, you give me some bad seed. I ain't gonna get no corn off mine. It ain't that big. I'll get them little old bitty ears of corn. You know, like our South Bone. His corn was doing good. You know what he said to me? He said, Son, do you water it? I said, Every day. He said, Son, do you hoe it? I said, Lord, no. I thought you only had to hold potatoes. He said, son, if you don't go home and hold that corn, it's going to die. Hold it up all the way around the corn. Pile all the dirt up close to it. Amen. And the next morning, my literally the next morning, I come out and that corn had grown twice its size overnight. Why? Because I tore up the fallow ground that was around it. Yes. Sometimes the preacher has to tear up the fallow ground that is around us. Because if we don't, we're not going to bring forth. Oh, that corn looked good. It was real pretty and green and, you know, all that good stuff. But it wasn't bringing forth anything. Right. But I hold that corn. Every other day, I hold that corn. And I had corn at the end of the season. But I would not have had corn if I hadn't tilled it up. And I'm telling you, if you don't get in this word and till up your ground, you will not bring forth fruit. You can be the prettiest apple tree on the block, but if you're not bringing forth apples, you ain't nothing but a tree. Right. You're useless. Good shade for We're useless in the kingdom of God if we don't bring forth the fruit. And what we must understand is the fruit of love will bring forth the other fruit. Amen. If you can tear open love and look in it, you can tear it open and look in it. You'd see all the other fruits in it. You'd see, you'd see the joy. Yes, you would. Hatred don't bring forth joy. Uh -uh. Hatred don't bring forth peace. Amen. Looking at everybody else and accusing them of everything and saying they're the problem, don't never fix nothing. No, it's for sure. Pam tells me it is all the time. <laughs> I get so tired of hearing preachers say, what's wrong with the church? Come on. Come on. You're what's wrong with the church. Yeah. I'm what's wrong I need with a the mirror. Church. We're too busy looking at the other trees to see what they're bringing forth that we don't bring forth anything ourselves. Amen. Amen. Come on, I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. You can't love with just your family. You have to show love. You have to show it and let people know that you care about them and that you love them and you'll do whatever you have to do to keep them in the church. Let me tell you something. Jesus come along and he found that tree in that near. I'm just about done. And he wanted to, he wanted, he calls him a husband. He wanted to cut the tree down. The man that took care of the vineyard. He said, Don't do it again. Don't let me. Don't, 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 don't make me cut it down. Don't make me destroy it. But let me work with it. Let me work with it. He didn't work too hard. Let me dig up a You know what he said? Let me dig up a Let me put some dust and some fertilizer on it. Fertilizer's good, but too much fertilizer will burn you up. Uh, come on. If every time we come in here, we shout, we run, we dance, we're going to get burned out. Sometimes we need to just, you know what they say to do? I ain't never done this, but this is what they say to do. They say, talk to your vegetables. Talk to your vegetables. Pam talks to her. She talks to me. He's growing. 
You look. Talk to them. That thing can't hear you walk. Even though the corn's got ears, it can't hear. Oh my gosh. But you look here. You know what happens when you begin to talk to that? You know who it fixes? It fixes you. You. You are building a relationship with that garden. I know that sounds so crazy. That's true. I know that does. Oh, but think about it in the spirit. But my grandma had flowers all around her house. She loved those flowers. Every day she would go out there. Not in the heat of the sun, but in the evening. And she would look at the Yes, sir. Strength in numbers. Oh, yeah. They brought so much fruit from that tree that the tree split. It broke over. The branches broke over because it had so much peaches on it. But, and, and let me tell you something. It wasn't because of that tree. It was because of the tree we planted next to it. They worked together. They worked together. Like the church if you want the too. church to grow, you've got to learn how to work together. You Amen. Do you know something? That peach tree that we bought, the second one, and planted it, it never said a word about that other tree bringing more fruit. It, I did it come out of the house one day, that tree said, so I, I don't know why that tree don't work, doing so good, and I'm doing so bad. Yeah. Just like church folks. Yeah. Huh? Just like church people. It's all great. Let me tell you something. 